Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Taranja with the Citizenship Academy. Today we're reading um, from our new reader, Chapter 3 of Navigation in the Age of Exploration. Do you ever go on trips with your family? How do the adults in your family find the places they want to visit? Do they write down directions? Do they use maps? Do they look for landmarks along the way? Do they have an electronic device that tells them where to turn? Early European explorers didn't have the most of the didn't have most of these things. Most sailors in those days stayed close to land and looked for familiar landmarks. However, this could not work for explorers. They could not look for familiar landmarks because they were sailing into unknown waters. Early explorers did have some maps, but they were not always accurate. So how did the explorers keep track of where they were? Things we use today to find places we want to visit. They had several tools that they made might have used. One of them was a compass. A compass is a very simple device. It is just a little magnet that sits on a pin so it can spin. The pointer on the magnet points north. Back then, nobody knew why. Now, we know it's because Earth has a magnetic field, which is the strongest at, pol at the poles. Magnets are attracted to the magnetic field of the North Pole. Using a compass, a sailor could figure out which direction was north. Plus, if he knew which direction was north, he could figure out south, east, and west. That was a big help. A compass. Explorers also used the stars to keep track of their position. Sailors in this day used two gadgets. One was called a quadrant. The other was called an astro astrolabe. <laughs> Sorry. The details of those, how these gadgets work are complicated, but the basic idea is not. The idea is that you can keep track of the, your position on Earth by keeping track of where certain stars appear to be in the night sky. If you can tell where the Sun, the North Star, and other key stars are, you should be able to figure out where you are on Earth. That's an astrolabe. Others may, may have kept track of how far they had traveled using a method called dead reckoning. Here's how dead reckoning worked. A sailor had a piece of wood that was tied to a rope. The rope was knotted at regular intervals. There might be a knot every five feet. The sailor would toss the piece of wood overboard while the, sa the ship was sailing. When the wood hit the water, the sailor would turn over an hourglass. The sailor or the captain of the ship would then watch to see how much rope was pulled out of the ship and into the sea. If the ship was going fast, it would quickly leave the piece of wood behind. It would pull many yards of rope out of the ship before the hourglass ran out. If the ship was going slower, it would not pull as much rope out. Then, the person could would count how many knots of rope got pulled out of the ship before the hourglass emptied out. If you've ever heard of a ship's speed referred to as knots, this is a forerunner of that measurement of speed. Dead reckoning helps sailors keep track of how fast and how far they had traveled. Explorers used many tools to help them navigate. A ship's captain could use dead reckoning to help to make an estimate of how fast the ship was moving. Then he could estimate how far the ship would travel in an hour or a day. He could use a compass to know which way he was heading. He could put all this together to make an estimate of where he was. So that is the end of our chapter for today and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!